Golf is a beautiful thing to watch. It's timing and rhythm. All right, welcome back, everybody. It's half past six in the morning, and we're playing the back nine today. The temperature is about minus two degrees Celsius. The skies are clear, and there's a veil of frost on the course. I'm looking to practice my wrist hinge and rehinge today, a concept that the golf coach Paul Wilson often highlights in his videos. It's pretty cold, and we haven't warmed up at all before teeing up. We'll just call that one a breakfast ball. That's looking much better. I shot this ball way further than expected. I recently came across the term flyer, which is a ball hit from the rough, that got much further than expected. Apparently, it has to do with a lack of spin due to the grass getting trapped between club face and ball. That way the grooves can't impart any spin onto the shot. Oh man, these four to six foot putts are real backbreakers for me. I've recently started rereading Dave Peltz's putting bible. Maybe I can extract some forbidden putting knowledge from there and banish those completely unnecessary two putts. It looks like his club face was open at impact. The shot was straight, just pushed out to the right. We've got an 8 iron for 144 yards. Oh, I guess I'm disappointed with that one. Probably caught it thin. Oh yeah, I remember. I could clearly tell at impact that I pulled that one to the left. That's a pretty flat trajectory, but the ball ends up right where you want it in the fairway. And that was some pure impact. There are times where you can really feel the hollow inside of the driver as the ball compresses against the face. It doesn't even feel like you're hitting a driver anymore, but rather just a natural extension of your arm. I think this one ended up in the bunker on the right. You can see in his swing that it's arms first, body follows. But what him and I are both trying to achieve is body first, arms follow. This is something that Ben Hogan talked about when asked the question what he thought was the most important thing in the golf swing. And he answers that it is the initial movement of the lower body. Here, have a look at this video of Ben Hogan explaining. Well, the most important uh, thing in the golf swing to me is the movement of the lower body from the top of the swing. And if you don't mind, I'll demonstrate. First off, you start down below with your knees and your hips. At the top of the swing, you move the lower part of your body not your shoulders, the lower part of your body, letting your arms and hands follow, bringing you into position to hit. But this is the first movement, there. Then you release at the bottom. Most people do it entirely opposite. They rotate their shoulders first instead of their lower body. As a result, they come across the ball and hit the outside of the ball instead of the back of it. So, I did a 9 o'clock swing with the 8 iron, and I was thinking to myself, do the movement, just do the movement. Don't think about the ball, it's not even there. Because there's a huge difference when you're concentrating on the fluidity of your swing compared to focusing on hitting the ball. 
I was anticipating a fade, so I set up to the left of the pin. But because I just focused on the movement, I even managed to put a draw on the ball, which is super rare for me. Alright, my dad is putting for par. Oh dear, just left it that tiny bit short. That happened for par? Alright, nice. I'm thinking to myself, do what you did on hole 12, which was thinking of the movement. For me, it's the concept of pull and rotate through the swing. Which is another way of saying, I don't want to swing with my arms, I want to swing with my core. This is one of Gary Player's central concepts he focuses on when teaching. This, this is your power. Here, here. No power in your hands. Now, the most important thing in golf, from the top of your back swing, you take your left hip from there, and you just rotate it. See that? You don't think of your hands. The hands come in automatically. The weakest part of your body are your hands. So why hit the ball with the weakest part of your body? All right, we've got a five iron and I, I hit an unintentional stinger. In other words, I caught it mighty thin. Even as I was standing over the ball, I had no faith in this shot whatsoever. It was lying in frost covered rough, so I guess there wasn't that much you could do. But my shot rolled forever, so it made it to the dance floor in the end. <laughs> Oh yeah, have a look at the frost on the fairway. This would probably be considered rough at something like Augusta. Oh no, we leave the putt way short. Yeah, I'm incredulous. Alright, save the par. Nice. Oh my god, where's the break? Where's the break? As I'm standing over this ball, I'm trying to explain the movement to myself. I'm saying, don't hit at the ball, hit through the ball. Hitting through the ball means hitting with your body, and hitting with your body means keeping your arms pinned against your chest as you rotate. At least that's how I explain it to myself. This one was brutal. I'm setting up and thought to myself, I haven't lost a ball in the water the last 20 times or so I've played this hole. Really hope I don't lose one now. And in that moment, I was toast. The fear and doubt began to creep into my mind. When you think about what you want to avoid, it's like a command for it to happen.
<laughs> I did not like that putt. Alright, with a massive effort, we save a double bogey. so I can attack the pin with a pitching wedge or an 8 iron. So, I'm trying to explain to my dad what I think he's doing wrong. His swing looks very top heavy to me as if his hips are static and he's only turning his torso in a sweeping motion. In other words, his shoulders and hips are always in line, but you want to separate them, twist them against each other. The movement he's making right here looks much better. If he could take that into his swing, I think he'd be golden. Alright, we've got 8 iron going straight for the pin. A little left, but that looks like a good effort. I think I'm out of frame to the left. Yeah, nice putt. That's a tap in for par. Alright, so we end up 3 over through 9 holes. Well, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.